to achieve any goal they want or have ever wanted. So I really love this, um, but I just think that Anthony is just the coolest person. Um, so yeah, here he is. He's gonna join right now. I wanted to bring him on because um, I wanted to make sure I got through it. But um, we've got him joining in just a second here. And there he is. <laughs> hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Anthony? I'm doing good. I, I was, I was, I write our time. Like, you know, sometimes people get into meetings and they start talking and you're like, I got to go. And they're like, oh, one more thing. And it's like, no, no more things. I got to <laughs> no go. No more things, exactly. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm so good. I remember, um, I haven't seen you for a while. Last time I while. saw you was, I think, at the Brendan Bouchard event. It was. Yeah. yeah. Funny is, I started as like security. I just honestly was like helping out, guiding people. Right. I believe at the time I was, I was um, taking you and Daniel around, just kind of right. hanging out. It might've been San Diego, I want to say. And I was, just, I was just security. I actually used to get cards from people like, Hey, you do a good job of security. Just in case I'm like, I'm not really security. I'm like very nice. I'm a big That's guy. So funny. I'm very nice. Yeah. yeah you have you... this very intimidating um, presence about you, but there was something about you when I met you um, that resonated with me. I couldn't figure out what it was. I mean, besides you're just this cool dude. Um, you're you. just this kind of like big, cool dude. You've got this cool vibe about you. But there was something that sort of resonated with me. And now I know what it is. Because now I'm like, huh. I've had a chance to get to know you better. I've read your bio. Yeah. I know a little more about you. You've had a hard life. And I just, I just released my memoir that just came out, mm -hmm. which is, it's called The Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. And yeah. it's, you've had like over 30 traumatic life, e you know, events that have happened to you. And yeah. you are an overcomer. And I love that. I think that's maybe what resonated with me. And I like unspoken. Possibly. Yeah, yeah there's nothing is part of it. There's always, I, I find that they're the, the calmest, most settled humans that I know had to have been unsettled at some point in the past. Like yeah, I'm not, that, be, I'm not that calm. But I don't think yeah. people would describe me that way. <laughs> I, I'm that's not, my I mean, husband. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I don't know if calm is the word, but like settled, right? The, there's a sense of peace. And like uh, when I'm around people, like I'm stable. I'm a rock. Like I'm not right. the guy that's all over the but I think that only comes because at some point in my life, I wasn't. I was all over the place. Right. But yeah, I, that's probably most likely what it was. The universe letting us know we're human inside and we're, we're connected similarly in some ways. Right, right. And I, and I would say, because I was a trauma nurse. So when, when you know, stuff hits the fan, I am sort of that person people can count on. And my family still Same. counts on me. And, and you have a story, and I want to talk a little bit about it. But you were in foster care. I, we just recently, um, we're, we're the legal guardians right before quarantine. We got our nieces are now living with mm. us. So for all yeah. intents and purposes, we sort of adopted them. Um, yeah. But we had to get them out of foster care. So I've got crazy family stories, like pretty crazy Same. Family stories. Same here. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, it's you know, um, you're not alone in that. But um, you, you've got some stories about being in foster care and the disappointment of becoming an NFL player only to have an injury, um, which is, which, by the way, was a blessing in disguise. You know, it doesn't oh, feel yeah. It, but it was point, yeah yeah if you ask us it was a blessing in disguise because yeah. you're not going to be brain injured um yeah, yeah very sure i did the, i did the study i did the three-month study with uh, daniel and actually my brain healed like very very like cleanly and, and very distinctly in this like three months period we did the work yeah so you came into the clinics you got scanned i did i've been there yeah. a couple times yeah yeah i hung out down there it's an awesome place i like it curious did you see any emotional trauma in your scan I think that was the funny part is before I, because me and Daniel got connected by Brennan Burchard. Brennan sent me down there because he knew Daniel, right? And so he, I had not given him information, like he didn't know much about me, none of that. And so what ended up happening was we just kind of like connected. And then uh, I you know, did the whole thing. And when I was there, he read it. And he's like, you've had some trauma in the past, huh? And I was like, either this guy like set it up or like he, he just, <laughs> he could see it. And obviously you he hadn't looked it. You can see it. But he's like, did you have anything in the past half? I was like, well, actually. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I remember the first time um, I, he got points for the line because I, I, you know, females have heard so many lines. I thought he was the coolest guy when he said, you know, he wanted to see my naked brain before anything uh, else. And I was like, what? But, <laughs> he but really did, though. Cool. You're right. <laughs> so cool. But when he so when I looked at my scan and he was like, oh, this is this is PT, this is like emotional trauma. And I'm like, that's yeah. nonsense. And he's like, no, this is emotional trauma. This is physical trauma. And I was like, yeah. oh. Like he really gets to see inside my soul when he looks at this thing. Like yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy tucked in. Now I don't know if someone told me I want to see my naked brain that I wouldn't think it's like <laughs> borderline serial killer. So hey, kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That could have been. That could have been bad. <laughs> I suppose it's good that I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, that's but, awesome um, though. So, so what do you think was the the thing that turned it around for you, Anthony? I mean, you've been through so much. I mean, yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit of your story. 
And yeah. then what turned it around for you? Yeah, I mean, um, I, you know, I, so I guess the trauma that hits me is not, it's not different from most human beings, right? It's people. People have been the trauma. It's usually what it ends up being. So my mom gave us away as kids, me and my, my three siblings. And so I went into a system that was heinous. So a lot of physical abuse, emotional abuse. Uh, and I was adopted into an all-white family that I was with for about eight years before adoption. So I was in the system for 11 years, grew up in a really poor family, the only black guy. Um, for a like, only kid that was black in my school for a lot of years, right? So oh, wow. I had a lot of weird just not only was it like trauma, but it was also like not having stability or a place where I felt like I connected or even belonged. And so it was consistent. And then tried football. Um, I got, you know, a whole bunch of weird things took place. Then my mom got diagnosed with MS. So I had like this family situation going on. Um, oddly, somehow through a lot of weird turn of events, I started being horrible at football, got really good, and eventually ended up playing in, you know, college on a scholarship, went to the NFL. In college, I had a son at 19, met my real dad at 20 years old, had a lot of ups and downs there. NFL stands for not for long. So I got in, tore my left shoulder, got out. I actually have surgery in two weeks to kind of clean this thing up because I had a lot of fun stuff going on. But then like life happened. This is where like it really sucked is I came home and I didn't know who I was. Like I completely lost a sense of like solidarity and, and like my, my persona and feeling confident as a human. I'd lost football. I had, you know, at this time my, my high school sweetheart and I had another two kids. So we had three kids. I'm not a present father wife's not around and like, you know, I'm not around my wife. And so because I'm at this gym, I built doing that the whole time. She had nobody. She has these three mm -hmm. kids, you know, and she hasn't, so she ends up stepping out on me and just life came shattering down. I'd lost this family that as a foster kid meant so very much. Um, I didn't have a sense of strength of self from football. I was gone. The gym business I started was about bankrupt. Uh, mm -hmm. I was out of shape. I was covering my belly with hooded sweatshirts to cover up that I was out of shape while I owned a gym. Yeah. It is everything, you know, and at one point I didn't want to be here. I'm like, if this is life after the game, I don't want this. And I got into a fog for a couple of years. I, I call the fog that, that time frame when it's just like, you look back on it, you can't remember. You were just surviving, just surviving. Right. Yeah. And so what ended up happening was I, I, I woke up and you asked when it took place. It was, uh, it was April 15th, 2014. I was in a hospital with my mom, my dad, and my grandma, and my other siblings had all gone uh, to go get some food. And, uh, and it was, you know, kind of this moment where somehow, you know, it was just like this, they took her up, my mom off life support to the back end. And I remember an hour before she did, we all had these moments to kind of like privately talk. She was unconscious, and the doctor said, like, it's not looking good. And I made two very distinct promises. And, and one was clear was that I was going to get my life back on track. Because what most people don't know, foster kids, 75% of inmates in America in prisons are former foster kids. Mm -hmm. Half our homeless population, less than 1% of us will ever graduate from college. So like the statistics for me being any kind of successful are phenomenally slim, let alone 0.002% of humans or football players get a chance to play in the NFL. So I beat a lot of odds, and it was because of her. Like she loved me beyond logic. Just didn't make sense the unconditional love she had for me. So my thing was like, man, if her life was ending in this way, and I, I, she was, her body's ability was robbed from her through MS. Like I got the ability, I got to do something with this. And so like, I was like, I'm gonna figure my life out, mom. And then two, when I do, I'm going to do what you did for me. I'm going to unconditionally love the world in some way. I don't know how at the time I was still in the gym and I didn't know about this entire world of speaking and, and helping people. And so I set on a path, like figure myself out. It took me another three years to really like figure it out. But then I got to the realm of about 2016 and at the end of 2016, I actually got back uh, with my ex-wife. A whole lot of conversations wow. of forgiveness and growth. And so we're in an amazing marriage right now. Like, I, wow. I love her beyond words. My kids have a father. I'm in good shape. And so I made good on promise one. And now I get to spend the rest of my life making good on promise two. And, and the most critical thing I did was figure out the core of who Anthony is. Like, who, what's my identity? It's the realm of work I do. Because when you get that, like, everything else settles into place. And then from there... Once I know who I am, like, who do I want to become? Yeah. And when you, when you think about everybody's like, I want to have this, I want to have that, all that stuff you want to have the byproduct of who you are. Yes. And when you can get that kind of functionality and realize it's a tactical thing you can do, well, then you can work towards that with a real clear plan. So I go in, I tell people, I help them make shift happen, which is a, a identity shift, a core shift inside to change your life outside. And so that's what I do. And I help people make shift happen in their life and their business by, uh, by really what I turn into is a prolific executor. Yeah. So the work I do is around my life, which was like I executed like crazy in my personal life, in my business, in my health. And so it all comes to fruition and a kind of cool thing I get to do, which is born of my heartache and hardship, but it gives me the ability to help people. And I so love that. I, I just, I, I resonate with you so much as, it, as I'm listening to you and I'm reading the comments. Um, I mean, so much of your story, you would not think we have that much in common, but we have a yeah. lot in common.
Yeah. Because, um, I mean, I wasn't in foster care, but I grew up very poor. 16, my mother was a 16 year old runaway. Mm -hmm. um, she didn't finish high school, worked three jobs. You know, I had a ton of trauma that happened. We were, when you're poor, you, you know, you grow up fast and you yeah. try to figure out life and Have it was to. really hard. So there was a lot of yeah. stuff that happened when I was growing up. Um, but as I'm listening to you, I'm like, oh, I, I, I resonate with that. I resonate with that. And I'm listening yeah. to the comments or I'm reading the comments and a lot of people are resonating with you. And they're saying, I love hearing these stories because it makes me feel more normal. Yeah. Everybody you has know, it going on. All, right. All Lots of people humanity. have trauma. It's why I wrote my book. It's why you're doing what you do. It's why you tell people your story because yeah. you're not alone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we all have these, these stories. I mean, a lot of people have these stories and it's, it's what you do with it that matters. So yeah. I love this idea that you make shift happen, right? Shift it's, happen, just, yeah. it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's simple and it's really that's what we all want to do anyways. We want to make something cool happen. And I mean, for me now, like I've been on television, I've been American Ninja Warrior. I just filmed the TV show That's so cool. in, in Portugal. Yeah, I did some cool stuff, man. And, and, and it, the thing for me, it's like, I not only do I teach this, but I genuinely live it. Like I just yesterday was streaming live to T-Mobile, six plus thousand people live. I'll end up going in front of 20 to 80,000 of people inside their company. But this is all stuff that doesn't make sense. You know, it's like, that's not logical. But I love to do it, right? I love to find out how I can execute and do things at levels that don't make sense to most people. Right. But that's how life is lived. It's not lived in a space of, of hoping and, you know, maybe it'll take place. I'm like, I'm going to go make it happen. And I have a, a plan, a process that, that makes it complete. But that's what's cool is you, life is lived there, right? That's when I get excitement and, and realize I'm not special. That's a crazy thing. Like, right. I have a brain. I have yes. a body. I can but we're talk. we're not unique. We're not. Not we're really. Not really. We're not. People, Our people stories like, are not that unique. No. And people are sitting there going, oh, sounds good because you guys got this stuff. From where we came from to where we're right. at, I'm telling you, we are not unique. We just, we did some unique things and we kept stepping back up and most people would logically stop. And we, we did the crazy thing, but it gave us the cool life. Like it gives you what more freedom you want. I have a question. So looking back now, all the pain you went through, and I know it was a lot because I had that yeah. exact same thought. If this is life, I actually wanted to die. I kept praying yeah. that like a truck would hit me or something would happen. There was no point. I was wasting oxygen on the planet. Mm -hmm. With all the stuff and all the pain you went through, would you take it back now? No, no. Now, that's a question that it's, I always try to think of the person, these people are listening to us now thinking like, oh, it sounds good, Anthony. Here's the thing. Would you like to, and so I ask people like, okay, say all of a sudden you're strong. Would you, would you like to have missed out on understanding how to work out and how to build muscle and all those, those hard moments that allowed you to feel confident about yourself along the way? Like, no, I, yep. I like the workouts, right? I like, I like knowing what I did to get the body I have. And so like for me in my life, it's like, there's a statement I love is a smooth sea makes not a skilled sailor. And a lot of yes. people, they, they, they try to avoid the, the, the storms and then, or they, they never entered them. So when they were young, they bypassed that. Parents helped them out. It was all great. Now they get older and they have far more responsibility, but no idea how to navigate storms. So because of that, when I get into life as an adult, I have so many more things like, like tools. Like when people are under the decks freaking out, they're under, like I'm at the top sipping tea, screaming at the ocean, you know, like I'm having fun in a weird way, but it's only because I've been under the deck before, been yep. freaking out before, right? And so when you do it, like, so no, my past stuff, it quite literally has given me the tool set to do this now. But the problem is, here's what most people don't, they've looked at it or look at it now as if it was a detriment or a shameful thing or no one should know about this. And they, they've removed the focus so they don't get the tool. And I tell people, like, we gotta go back and take a yeah. look at all this stuff you did because damage are still here, right? So grab this tool, grab the, the hidden confidence and apply it to the next thing. And then you find that life turns into this whole new world of like a puzzle, it's fun to solve. My, my son, he hates puzzles right now. And I'm like, dude, I love puzzles. And when you get to love puzzles, you get to love life. I love that. That's actually really cool. That's a cool thing. Yeah, I, um, people have asked me that before, and here's the truth. I love what you said. It gives you the skill. But it also, I, one thing I realized, you know, all of the awful things I went through, there's no way I could have known that, no. that all the terrible no. things I went through, that actually the point where I wanted to die would be the thing that would give me the juice that I have now, that would give me mm -hmm. the purpose I have now, that the trauma I went through would be what I use to help people yeah. find their transformation. And so, yeah. you know, it's, it's like, wow, turning pain into purpose is one of the coolest things you can do. But it took, it's like, how do you, you know, I know it's such a, it's overused analogy, but it's so true. How do you 
you know, forge steel. <laughs> it's got to go through fire. And yeah. so I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back. I just, I, I actually feel like, I don't feel like it was necessarily intended to happen, but I definitely feel like you can use what happens. Yeah. Yeah, you should. I, I mean, I think it's a necessity. We got, the thing is, we've all had these things. Some people will unfortunately compare our, my problem to their problem. Oh, I didn't go through the same things. It, it's, all relative. It, yeah. it's all relative because to be quite honest, there are people who like it, the things that are easy to me are crazy hard to them and vice right. versa. Right. So you have it there. You're just, you're, you're poorly judging it or not seeing your value. It's odd. No, I like that. I like that you're saying don't, don't compare your, your situation or your problems to someone else. Cause we yeah. may not handle someone else's situation, you know, the same way that not they at all. There are, there are so many things I look at. I'm like, I could handle a lot, but I can't handle that. And I don't know how you did it, but kudos to you. And I'll just keep watching it. But it's kind of like that. You ever seen that Dove like a commercial they did years ago? It was like a study. They had you know, these two women walk into a room with a sketch artist, and they'd have one woman tell about herself, and the sketch artist would draw a picture of her. They'd have her friend describe her then, draw a picture. They'd come back and show both pictures. The picture of the person who was describing themselves was always ugly. They could always oh. see what's wrong. The person describing the friend was always beautiful. And it was this really kind of interesting narrative, like we are really good at seeing the bad stuff, but not very good at seeing the good stuff. So true. So true. What are you working on right now besides your makeshift happen? Are you doing anything? Um, I do lots how of can weird people stuff. find you? Yeah, yeah I'm, you I'm an oddball. Uh, I have a book that comes out in September. I'm quite oh. literally in my studio. It's reset. I'm, I'm filming some videos here in a minute. So I'm like, I'm usually sitting in my chair, but I'm all like, uh, I got this board behind me, me writing some things. Um, but a book comes out. I have coaching programs that I, I have coming out, which is cool because we have an app that's coming along with it here in the next couple of weeks. Cool. So I'm just dialing some things in there. What's Outside of book? that, I'm, what's that? What's the book? Oh, the book's called Identity Shift, to Upgrade How You Operate to Elevate Your Life. And uh, I'm excited about it. It's a, it's a oh, really cool. Very cool. You'll have to let me know when it comes out. I would love to September. Oh, that'd be book. awesome. I would love some help there. I, you know, for me, it's one of those things where it's uh, it's a very like it's it's a simple book. I wanted to make it not like a bunch of studies and because there's people that go like here I'm a little structural. I was like I want to talk to people because the individuals that are like myself and you like it's it's you're gonna get kind of see behind the scenes of maybe how you've operated, but I want people to really grasp the difference because it's not always the strategies and the systems and the connections. Like it's really who am I as a human? How do I understand what that is? And how do I dial that in? Like, what are the, the levers I can flip? What, you know, the, what are the buttons I can push? And when people read the book, they'll grasp like, oh, that's why I do hard stuff. This is who I am. This is how I get. So like, it, it clarifies the path to success. I find that a lot of people look at like successful people and say, I'm not them. It's like standing on one bank of river and looking at you know, Tano on that side of the river and saying, I can't get to that. Look at the Russian river. I can't get there. And I say, you, you can. No, I can't. And I grab their shoulders and I turn them and they see that bridge now. Like, yeah. oh, <laughs> I can get there. Right. So it's kind of that bridge that shows them how to get there. So true. I love that. So you've got your coaching. How can people find you? How can they have you as a coach if they want you as a coach? Yeah, you can. Well, you, I'm on Instagram where you guys are already at now. So you can DM me the word shift, which allows me and the team to kind of get in contact with you. Or if you hit the link in my bio, uh, it takes you to a place where you can actually book a call with our team. And we walk you through what's called the shift method, because this process isn't just me talking like it's a very dialed in method that has all the full curriculum in the background you walk through and then it applies itself to a tool called rhythm reset technology because i look at identity like resetting your rhythm and your cadence when you do that you get into good groove the rhythm of your life is amazing um, and it's hands-on with me a team a phenomenal community and, and we guide people to be prolific executors so as opposed to this uh, this epidemic of shelf esteem we're in where people buy mm -hmm. things and don't consume it or don't apply it like we get to the point where like you are executing at levels that don't seem human, like literally prolific levels. And it, that's in time what creates new habits, which creates a new identity. So I, I get to the end result of like, you're going to make an identity shift, but I'm going to trick you there by pretty much making you accomplish all your goals. I love that. And after this past year, who doesn't need that, right? When everyone's been binge watching Netflix and, you know, even, even I noticed my energy started to drop and I started to think like a middle-aged mom. I have a friend who like kicked my rear um he's a very high level performer and he's like you know your problem isn't that you're a middle-aged mom and you're going through menopause that's not your problem because your problem is you're thinking like one you've adapted yeah. to your environment and when yeah. he said that i like ding 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 he's like because i i used to well i do practice karate but for the past year i haven't he goes mm -hmm. when you're in the dojo you had to adapt to an intense environment and yeah. now you've adapted to wearing fuzzy socks and sitting around watching netflix and i'm like oh my god he's so right and so i like kicked my own rear I like got my tank out of the garage and started like working out really hard and put some blasted some music and turned off Netflix and it completely changes how you feel. Yeah, it does. Vast so, difference. you know, the, the environment's a big piece of it all. 
So we need coaches. It's all stuff we have control over. And and the thing is, I think people, uh, it's interesting. So as I tell people, like, I don't need a coach. People, I think people view coaches like there's something wrong with me. It's nuts because here's what I looked at is I play professional football. I was one of the best athletes in the world for my sport. And so knowing that, like, I always, I had like five coaches, you know? So people like, I don't need a coach. I'm like, that's great. But here's what I realized. My coach, like, I could be on the field and kill it. I was fast. I could see right here. I know what's going in front of me. But I couldn't see the field. Yeah. I could see here. But so, like, the coach has always been, like, and I've always had a coach at any level of my career of someone that can come in and see the things that I can't see. Yes. And there's people. I've hired people that aren't even as successful as me in certain areas, but, like, they're phenomenal at things that I'm not great at. And so, yeah, it's not even you have to have a coach forever, but if you're, like, in that stagnant point – you need someone who can see the things that you don't know, like the blind spots. You need to have someone yeah, I who, always have coaches. Yeah, who, 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 like this area we don't know, we don't know. You need someone to know what you don't know and yep. introduce you to it. And that's what coaches do. Good yep. ones at love least. Love it. I love it. Well, I'm like super happy that we got to do this. Um, I would encourage people to go check out your coaching program. But mm-hmm. I just have to say, I love that you got back together with your wife. I just Me congratulate too. on that. That it's is awesome. super cool. Yeah, it's, it's not a norm. It's definitely not a norm. It's statistically not supposed to happen because there's like what, 50 plus percent of people get divorced at, off top. We're both from divorced families, which makes that even double. Yeah. Right. Um, on top of that, we have multiples we have twins, which makes that even higher. And I grew up in foster care. So the yeah. fact that we're here is a, a weird oddity. I'm a man of faith. I believe God did a whole lot of crazy work on me in my life. I think he gave me a lot of problems. But the anchor point of our entire relationship is the fact that there's a, a power higher than us. Uh, we lean yeah. into in, in times when things aren't great. Like we, we, we do lean into our God. It, it makes it much easier. It's not always oh, easy, right? We're still humans, but it makes it much easier. And, and honestly, it just, it makes it much more fun. I feel more free in a relationship than, than out. Like when I was single, I hated it. Like I'm not yeah. built for that to be totally yeah, honest. Like, I, 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 my I, best friend. Absolutely. Just, yeah. He's my rock. That's He's my best it's friend. Huge. He keeps me sort of like grounded and sane. So yeah, it's awesome. I agree. I agree with yeah. you. That's so cool. Beautiful. Cool to have well, you on. Thank that. you, man. I, I'm, I'm glad we got to hang out and chat today. I, yeah, I so randomly got the message. Me I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah this that's is cool. cool. Yeah, super fun. Well, thanks, Anthony. I hope you have a great day and wish you all the success and make sure you Thank stay you. connected and reach out to us when your book comes out. I will. I 100% will. Thank you so much. All right, Anthony. Have a great right. day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.